Hi, everybody. We got three people here that want to give you the testimony that we gave on July 8th at the Senate Governance and Finance Committee. And the reason we're doing it a second time is that we got cut off short. We, we were told we were going to get three minutes per primary opposition speaker. And then when we showed up at the meeting, they cut it back to two. Well, the committee could have told us to prepare for two. We called them at 930 before the 1130 meeting, but they didn't tell us then. And they didn't follow up and tell us otherwise. Very crazy. So here we are just trying to make sure we can get these out and get it done right. I'm Paul McGavin. I had a me too, but I gave my spot I'm to I'm Dr. Crone. Cheryl Shire. And you'll be next. And then after that? Uh, Alex Crone. And Paul, let me just say that they did confirm it via email that it was supposed to be three minutes. That's what we were told. That's right. I got that email. Cheryl got it. And you got oh. it. So we all said, wait a minute. We said three minutes, but they said, oh, we're going to cut you back to two. Well, here's the full three minutes the way we should have done it. Cheryl, lead us off. Thank you, Honorable Mike McGuire and esteemed members. Please ask me questions after my testimony. I attest and affirm that these statements are true, accurate, and within my personal knowledge. I'm Dr. Cheryl Shire. My PhD is in business administration and financial management. And I've been working through my TV show, and podcasts for nine years to promote the safety of life and property and the exact purpose of the Telecommunications Act under which AB 537 falls, but which AB 537 violates. As a fourth generation Californian and a direct descendant of Charles Coatsworth Pinckney, one of the signatories of the US Constitution, I also intend to ensure that our federal and state constitutions remain intact. However, AB 537 is clearly in violation of both in offering an open-ended contract for FCC to do whatever it may want in perpetuity. AB 537, SB 556, and SB 378 and related bills are not just an affront on contract law, they are also sabotage the local control guaranteed by the US Congress. These bills would harm our cities, threatening residents' public safety, privacy, and freedom from warrantless surveillance. The Senate knows that these bills are not of, by, or for the people, but rather bills written by Alec and industry lawyers rushed forward to avoid public scrutiny. We the people want wired broadband service, fiber optics to the premises for which we've already paid on our phone bills from 1995 to the present, not hazardous wireless broadband deployed far too close to homes using excessive power. You must abide by Title 47 USC 324, use of minimum power, which states in all circumstances, all radio stations shall use the minimum amount of power necessary to carry out the communication desired. Yes, every wireless communications facility is a fixed radio station with frequencies licensed from the FCC section 324 applies. California State Public Health Officer and Director of CDPH, Dr. Thomas Aragon, is a mandated reporter for conditions of child endangerment. Dr. Aragon was informed on October 23rd, 2019 of child endangering conditions created by wireless infrastructure in San Francisco and Sacramento. Five months after losing an appeal of so-called small cell and, and the woman living there needed emergency sur surgery to remove a bloody mass from her brain, forcing her to move. In Sacramento, children sickened within three weeks of powering on the cell tower in front of their home. This is real evidence stated by doctors, real endangerment. It is critically important that Dr. Aragon address this before any more votes are taken by SB 
6, AB 537, or SB 378. The California legislature can simply postpone further deliberations on, on until January 2022, making them two-year bills. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cheryl. We really appreciate that. Alex, you're next. What's up? All right. Uh, this was my testimony. Uh, Chair McGuire and esteemed members, thank you for your time today. My name is Alex Crone. I'm a licensed physical therapist and founder of Safe Technology for Santa Rosa. After years of hard work and community support, just last week, Santa Rosa passed a protective small cell ordinance. Wireless of NEG is cheap third rate broadband infrastructure, far inferior to fiber optic cable or coaxial cable services directly to the home. Wireless infrastructure is not reliably fast enough and not symmetric, an important concept to understand. It must have the same speed up and down. Who says this? The Department of Treasury in their June 2021 funding requirements for broadband coronavirus recovery funds. Wireless broadband can't meet this standard. According to Ookla Speed Check and PC Magazine in 2021, 5G is no faster than 4G and it's Asymmetric upload speeds are a small fraction of its download speeds. What is needed for federal broadband funding is 100 megabits down, which is what I receive, and 100 up, which is what I send out. Only cable or fiber to the home can do this. Wireless can't reliably do this. It is not future proof. And as we continue to require more and more bandwidth for our economy and education, it will be impossible for wireless to keep up with this demand. Wireless uses microwave radiation, a proven carcinogen, neurotoxin, and immunosuppressor through the air to send and receive data, but fiber optics uses visible light through a cable to send and receive data. The difference between wireless and fiber optic frequencies are a million times. This means fiber optic can carry a million times more data than wireless can. AB 537 will be a deemed approved nightmare for localities. It will pit millions of Californians against their cities and counties, local governments that are obligated to deliver actual public safety and quiet enjoyment of streets. Californians do not want their neighborhoods flooded with cell towers outside their bedroom windows. Do you want this for you and your family, Senators? Senators, please understand the FCC shot clock for so-called so small cells were ruled by the Ninth Circuit to be presumptive only. That means they are statements of FCC preferences and not federal law. Don't let the wireless industry bamboozle you here. AB 537 is attempting to turn weak FCC preferences into concrete state law. Trusting the sponsors of these bills, the wireless companies, to make good on contractually unenforceable promises is simply repeating the broken promise playbook of the last 30 years, the definition of insanity. What we got in the last 30 years was revealed by the pandemic. Higher prices, degrading quality of service, and over 2 million kids who could not connect to attend school. So AB 537 will in large part leave kids, mostly minorities, right where they are today on the wrong side of the digital divide. Please do the right thing. Vote no on this deemed approved nightmare of a bill. Go back to the drawing board and find a way to truly provide Californians affordable broadband to bridge the digital divide. Fiber optics to the premises is the answer. Thank you. I have to tell you, I think they were both amazingly excellent comments. I think that uh, you guys were the smartest people in the room. I listened to the questions by Senator Terrazzo, and they were all softball questions for Verizon and for Quirk. They should have been asking you these questions. They would have gotten much better and more informed answers. These people are getting misled. They're believing that these three bills together, you see, the, the problem is we had this happen four years ago. The bill was called SB 649. And it was the same thing. Just go in front of people's homes, take away local control, put cell towers everywhere in, in residential neighborhoods. Well, now they split them across three different bills. Pretty sneaky. And that's why you have to look at all three. OK, one does. We're going to go on all the infrastructure. That's SB 556. This bill, AB 537, is about signing up for these presumptive shot clocks, which are not necessary. They're designed to go through the courts if needed. And the whole point is no one wants to go to court, not even the wires company. 
no reason to make it state law. And then the third one is about, oh, we get to cut up your streets any way we want and put the fiber in for these small cells, just as a bad deal. And I honestly believe if they had heard the full testimony for both of you, because we, we moved thought we boats. would have three minutes, we prepared three minute comments, but then as the meeting started, they, they cut everybody back to two minutes, which was kind of odd, right? And yeah, the committee I, could have told us at 9.30 when we called them that it was going to be two minutes, but they didn't. They said they were going to get back to me, right? Do you remember that? We called him from uh, the Sheraton, and he said, well, you know, we haven't heard back yet, so we'll call you. But he never yeah. did, right? <laughs> we asked uh, Itzel Vargas. She's sitting there. And I asked her, uh, has Alex been um, approved? Because I was giving up my speaking spot to Alex. And she wouldn't tell us. She couldn't just clearly say yes. She knew she was looking at the sheet, but she wouldn't tell us. Mm -hmm. And what she decided to do then was email. You notice that the time of the email was like 1129. I think I asked her at 1125. And she wouldn't tell us whether you were approved or not. We asked the security guy and he looked through the list and he said he couldn't find you. And then we said, are you sure? And we had to go okay. back. He had to look a second time. And then he did find both Cheryl and Alex as approved. So I don't speakers. understand why they play these games, but they shouldn't. And so then after I saw the security guy and Itzel Vargas working from the committee staff, both had the sheet of speakers in front of them, I asked to see it, which is our right to do because it's a public meeting. They refused to show it to us, right? Remember that? That's why we're going to put this on the website and I'm going to put a link to it to every senator and assembly member for them to hear it before they vote on the floor. I think you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. You too. All your hard work, Paul. Okay, well, I'm going to get my Me Too in anyway. This is what I said. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul McGavin from Wire for representing millions of electromagnetic sensitive Californians who know that any PhD in physics like Assemblymember Quirk can make no statements about the safety of microwave radiation because they don't have any credentials in reading the biological literature. And we oppose the bill. So that was something I said directly to Senator Quirk as he walked in the room. They didn't like the fact that I said that, but I said it anyway, because it's the truth, all right? So listen, guys, you did a great job. We appreciate you coming all the way to Sacramento. It shows that you really cared, right? You got in the room Amen. and you fought for California and I really, really appreciate it. But I think you're the smartest people in California on these issues. So I was happy that you both spoke on behalf of all of California. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank, thank you again, Paul, for all your hard okay, work. I'm gonna say goodbye. All right. Bye. Adios.